your nations, mountains move, chains are loose. When I see your chains, darkness flees, it has no
this place. I exalt thee. I exalt thee, Jesus. I exalt thee. Come on, let me hear you open up your mouth. I exalt you, Jesus.
clutched on to somebody and he's been holding on to you for a while and you've tried to leave but he's been clutched on to you and today he's been waiting for that pursuit to return to him because he's never let go clutched onto you. He is clutched onto you. He will never let go. He will never let go. As we come into the presence of the Lord, I was thinking as we were singing, that's kind of an old song, I exalt thee. But you know, it still has the breath of God in it, you know. When we say that, we really are saying to the Lord, I lift you, I magnify you, I, I make you bigger, I make you big. An old song, bigger than all my problems and bigger than all my fears, I know my God is bigger. He's bigger, but we make him bigger by putting him above whatever it is we're facing, dealing with, or whatever. It's all over this room on this great day that we celebrate Pentecost, the work of the Holy Spirit. Would you just do something? Would you just lift your hands as a point of surrender to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives? <laughs> we ask you, Lord, to do what we cannot do for ourselves. Holy Spirit, we ask you to have your way in us. Today, Lord, we do not want a revelation of man. We don't want a revelation of our problems. We want a revelation of you. Hallelujah. How oh, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
we come before you today believing that you are who you say you are and that your word is true. We believe that. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Lord, we ask that you have your way completely in all the way. Don't hold back, Lord, on us. <laughs> we'll do our best not to hold back on you, but Lord, even if we do, don't hold back on us. Come in your mighty power, strength, and by the power of your spirit, change our lives today. Change our minds. Impact our hearts. Hallelujah. We love you today, Lord, and we thank you. Find somebody this morning and just bless them. In the name of Jesus, just take their hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank God for you. Thank God. Thank God. Epic family and guests, and thank you for joining us today. If you are a first time guest, please fill out the connection card located in the seat pocket in front of you. For more information about how to get involved, please visit our website at epiclakeland.com. It's time for VBS 2014, June 12th through the 14th. Jump is a highly energized vacation Bible school curriculum where kids can fearlessly jump into the boat of faith with Jesus Christ. VBS 2014 here at Epic Church is sure to be filled with great Bible stories, cool games, 
free giveaways, and so much more. Volunteers are needed. Please sign up to volunteer as well as sign up your children ages 5 to 11 starting today in the lobby. Next Sunday at 9 a.m. is Discovery 3.0. This class will help you discover your personalities and gifts and see how God combines them for the best fit in ministry. Child care will be provided and registration begins at 845. And this is what's happening at the Epicenter. Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't greet this morning uh, Legacy Theater, so hello, Legacy Theater. I'm sure they're shouting over there. Amen. We're so glad to all, uh, have all of you here today. If you're here for the very first time, I'm Pastor Shirley. My husband and I are senior leaders here at Epic Church. I think he's probably over in the Legacy Theater. And uh, you uh, may not know, we have two sanctuaries that are happening at the same time, and we're so grateful for all that God's done for us. We love Jesus around here, and we love Pastor Stanley. Amen. 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 It's offering time, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, last week I shared with you about the covenant of blessing that we had with the Lord. And I read from, from Luke uh, chapter 6, verse 38. It says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, say the same measure that you use. It will be measured back to you. Okay. All right? Now, I want you to know this, that God is really, he's setting us up. Because he never gives us the same measure that we give. It's always over and abundant. It's always more than enough. More than you could ask or think or even believe. So I was thinking last, last week, I got a testimony probably a couple days later. And I'm not going to use any names, but this young lady came into the sanctuary, and someone gave her a sum of money. And when I gave the offering, the call for offering, this, this lady had this money that she was, was given to her when she first came in. She says, I, I don't really give money away when I get it. It's like, I, you know, I, it doesn't come that, that often. So when I get it, I hold on to it. And she said, and so there I was holding on to it. And she said, and as the minister said that it's a covenant of blessing, is she said, I just finally, I just released it and just left it in the bucket, just left it there. Didn't think anything more about it. Before she could leave this building, she received almost, as, almost as, as, as five times the amount that she had gave, given. She, before she could leave, somebody came up to her under the covenant blessing and handed her some money, and she left here with more than she gave. I'm telling you, I, I thought, I can't go by that one. See, we, a lot of times what we forget is the testimonies behind God's word. He, 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 he comes and performs his word by manifesting what it is that he said he would do. And so I, I, I had this thought. Back, back there when they had measures, and I don't have a robe on, as you can see. But just imagine me taking my robe that I have on, and I've got this measure of, of a gift. I've got maybe a full thing of, you know. So I'm going to my offering time. All right, with my measure. And so I, I, I'm kind of struggling over how much to give because I've got this bill, that bill, and those things and those. So I, I take some and I put it in the basket. All right, now the promise of God is with the measure that you use. In other words, the widow's might, what measure was that? It was all. See, God, he's not looking like we do. We look at volume, length, you know. No, God said, no, 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 no. I'm looking at your heart when you give. I know when it's, you don't have to tell me, well, Lord, you know, I just gave my life. You don't have to do that with the Lord. He, he knows. Yeah. And so with that measure that you give, God gives even more. And so a lot of times what happens is we, we, we're just happy to be able to give, you know, and, and we, we tip them with our tithe and offering. And then what happens is this. We leave out wondering, how come nothing moved me? Because, see, if your offering time doesn't move you in God, then it probably won't move God because he looks at our hearts. And all I'm saying is not how much you give. That's why you can, have, you can be the poorest person in this place. And when God gets ready to bless you, he can bless you with something that only rich people can afford. Why? Because it's not the measure that you have. It's the measure of the God that you serve. And when you give, 
as unto the Lord. He just, he just pours out. And imagine this. You got your thing. It's full. And you just decide, I'm going to take the whole thing and dump it in. And you walk away. And you think, okay, now I, I've done it. And someone comes and gives you pressed down, shaken together, pressed down, shaken together. See, when you came, it was all fluffed up. It looked real good. It was your week's pay. But by the time God gets done giving to you, it's pressed down. It's shaken. Make sure that you got every little crevice of that cloth that you have pressed down, shaken together. And then the amazing thing happens. What you didn't have, now you've got overflow. It just flows over. So stop giving out of your mind and your thinking and what I have and what I don't have. Start giving according to the measure of your faith that God has given you. Start pouring it all on him. Lavish it all on him. And watch and see, won't he pour out and open up windows. See, when God says I open up a window, you got to understand he made the heavens. He knows where every window is in heaven. And whatever it is that you may need, God said, see that window? Stanley, it's for you. Oh, it's open. Just go ahead and live. Just go. And I thought, Lord, I've been carrying this stuff in and going out with the same stuff, wondering why it hasn't changed. And because mine's not pressed down, mine's not shaking together, but his is. God, under this covenant of blessing, you got to believe this. He wants to bless you beyond all you can ask or think. There are many of you, you have ideals, you have things that God has put in your heart, and you wonder, where's the money coming from? Start giving from your measure, from your heart, and watch God change everything. I want you, those of you that have your tithe with you, we're going to take the tithe. Get together with the Lord and say, Lord, you know, I thank you for this covenant of tithe that I have with you. And make, it, make out your check and say, Lord, this is my tithe. This is a tenth of everything that I've made. And I'm bringing it before you. I want you to stand with me the tithe for the tithe, just the offering for the tithe. And everyone get ready for the offering, the, 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 the free will offering, because that's, that's the abundance. That's where God gives more. Come and give. garment this morning. We grab a hold of the attitude of gratitude, Lord, this morning. Our hearts are grateful. Our hearts are joyful, Lord. Even when we're going through something, we've got a praise on our lips, oh God. 
Even when we're passing through difficult times, Lord, you're still God all by yourself. So in the name of Jesus, we give this, this measure, Lord, knowing that you will give back to us into our bosom, Lord. You will press it down. You will shake it together. And it will run over. And the people of God said, amen. Give the Lord a shout. All right, amen. Good to see you this morning. Uh, it, I don't know if you realize it or not, but today is uh, the celebration called uh, Pentecost, which is 50 days after uh, Easter or Passover, actually. And um, this is the day we celebrate. This is the day that uh, the book of Acts talks about in Acts chapter 2 when the day of Pentecost had fully come. It was the Feast of Pentecost, and that's when all the people gathered for the feast. And that was when they had already gathered in the upper room. Do you remember that? They had uh, gathered in the upper room because Jesus told his disciples before he was taken up after his resurrection, they should go uh, to this, uh, go together and, and wait on the promise of the Father. And that promise was the Holy Spirit. And so they waited in that room, prayed for many days. And uh, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the Holy Spirit showed up. And, um, and you know, I, I grew up in a denomination that relegated the Holy Spirit to pretty much baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That was about the only time we ever heard about the Holy Spirit. But the reality is that the Holy Spirit uh, came on the day of Pentecost and uh, changed history forever uh, with the Holy Spirit with us and in us. We are now led by the Spirit. We're not uh, people who just uh, follow rules. We're people who are led. And the Holy Spirit is, uh, the Bible uh, calls him, and Jesus called him a friend, a comforter, a teacher, the Holy Spirit, in other words, he leads us into all truth, which is an amazing thing uh, when you realize that the Holy Spirit is with us today, and not only with us, but in us. And I celebrate the Holy Spirit. Uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit came on that day, and from that day forward, uh, as the apostles went about in the book of Acts, uh, talking about uh, this resurrected Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, they also talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the ability of God to be performed through his people. Now, I don't know what that means to you, but it means a lot to me. I, I know where my strength comes from. How about you? I, I get it. I know where my help comes from. Uh, I, I've learned that uh, if you look to people, you're going to be disappointed. So I look to the hills where my help comes from because my help cometh from the Lord. Amen. And, and it is the power of the Holy Spirit and the interactions and the personal revelation. The way we know who God is, is the Holy Spirit reveals the spirit of wisdom and revelation that is upon us reveals the father. And literally it says this, you can't know what your inheritance is or what your blessings are unless the Holy Spirit shows that to you. So we're blind Deaf and dumb without him. It's the truth, spiritually. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. The Holy Spirit groans through us. These are all scriptures. It's what the Bible says. So today, we are a group of people. I, I hashtag this morning. I, I have decided to become a tweeter. So you're going to be hearing from me. And I, I hashtagged, how did I say it? I love Pentecost. Hashtag, I love being Pentecostal, I think. I don't know. I, th I, I, put, I said, I love being, I don't know. I'll get this better. You'll see it when, if you're looking at your. <laughs> Amen. And we're excited, too, about all that God is doing through social media. And I want to encourage you. We're going to be talking more about uh, this for you. But, uh, you know, feel free to check in uh, on Facebook. Feel, feel free to tweet. And, uh, and, and, and feel free to, to let others know what God is doing. And if you're not a follower, you need to be a follower. Hallelujah. First follow Jesus and then follow whatever you do and all that stuff. All right. <laughs> I want to <laughs> read to you a scripture. Uh, a couple of scriptures you know very well, and then I'm going to talk to you today about it, what I believe is uh, a very important revelation and a subject for us. Um, the scripture 
you could, most of you could actually say this scripture by uh, your memory. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. In the Message Bible, it says it this way. This is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon's 70 years are up and not a day before, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. Now, I loved the message and the way it was said because I think that so oftentimes we've heard the scripture so much we're no longer hearing it. And, and the reality is that God has a plan. Uh, when, when he says, I know the plans I have for you, that word no means to forecast. And what he's really saying is, I have already forecast what your future is. How, how awesome is that? And, and I think sometimes in the midst of where we are and how we're, how we're navigating life, I think we come to the point sometimes where we think, well, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen next. We forget that our steps are ordered of the Lord, that a righteous man has his steps ordered of the Lord. If we believe that, if we believe that, if we believe the scripture, so some of us would look at it and say, well, I've heard that, you know, over and over. But if we believed it, we wouldn't be in the shapes we're in because we still don't have the full revelation that our God has already ordered our steps, that he's already forecast our end from the beginning, that God is already arranging and rearranging. And sometimes he has to, you know, kind of start over with us because we, you know, but messing up in God doesn't mean messing up forever because in God, there's a future and a hope. And so no matter where we are, how we're going, how we're getting there, God knows how to order our steps and get us on the path that he has ordained for our lives. Hallelujah. I sure am glad. Because there are times when I wonder, have I misstepped? Is it too late? Did I miss the opportunities? Whatever those things are that come to us and make us feel as though somehow we're failed and that, that there's no redemption possible, we have to understand that he already knew it. And nothing that happens changes that. Today I want to talk to you about purpose, but I want to talk to you about assignment and purpose. Sometimes we get our assignment mixed up with our purpose, and we don't know how to tell the difference. Another passage of scripture that we know very well, these are the two passages today that I want to read to you out of Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Now, again, in the message, it says this, before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. A prophet to the nations, that's what I had in mind for you. Now, I, I want to read in the message just to make it even more plain, but here's the point. He says, this is, this is how it works with God. He says, first of all, before you ever formed, I knew you. I knew you. That word knew means designed. So before you were formed, in other words, I designed you. And then not only that, I, I sanctified you. Even before you were born, I consecrated you or set you apart. I appointed and dedicated you to the purpose for which I have created you. And then he says, I ordained you or assigned you. This is what it really says. Uh, before you were formed in your mother's womb, uh, I designed you and before you were born I appointed and dedicated you and then I assigned you I want to talk about that word assignment because we can talk about purpose all day long and it's kind of a catchphrase now we're talking about God's purpose in our lives all the time well is that God's purpose is that God's you know God's purpose is something that is found it's not necessarily something that's known I'll say that again Many people are 
seeking after the purpose of God and, and not realizing that it is the purpose of God that finds us in the doing and going rather than our trying to get a destination. If I could get there, then I would have accomplished the purpose of God. The purpose of God has as much to do with how you get there as getting there. The overall purpose of God that has to do with the assignments. He said, here's the way it goes. I already know you. I know why I created you. I have a purpose. And you see, it is our creation that meets our purpose. God assigned purpose before we were ever born. So if we are out trying to find that purpose and we, we go here and we go there looking for how to figure all of this out, it doesn't even make sense because the one who created us has already assigned a purpose to us but the reality is that in the consecration dedication I love this about God that I am not a random thought you are not random this morning you you really you can be a part of a crowd and think you can hide yourself but in God you never will God sees us as individuals. He not only sees us as a corporate body, he sees each one of us. He knows our name, and he's written it on the palm of his hand. So he knows us. Hmm. Every hair on our head is numbered. So in some moments of my life, that is a great comfort. In other moments of my life, that's kind of a scary thought. No big amens on that one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure we're all kind of walking this walk the same. There are times when there's darkness around me, not, not darkness in me, but it's as though I cannot see clearly. I, I deal with confusion occasionally. occasionally. Anybody else in here deal with confusion just to know what, what 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 is God saying what's the next thing we want to please the Lord and 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 most of us in this room want to be happy and so we know that being happy isn't associated with circumstances it's all about our relationship with God and all of us want to have that kind of contentment and that kind of peace <laughs> but there are times when try as I may I can't see it. We were reminded this morning in prayer uh, with the, with the um, dream team. And we were just really in prayer and God speaking to us about just how, how even in darkness, you know, the, the season that we're in, in on the Hebraic calendar is one that talks about open doors. You remember the door we had, we all walked through. It, it's about open doors, but it also means it's the season of the seer. Now, you might not think that that applies to you, but the reality is that when God is wanting to reveal himself, guess what happens? There's a lot of darkness that will try to crowd in because when God's revelation is coming to us, the enemy always comes against us to nullify whatever it is that God wants to do in us. So that's why when we start moving towards God, you know, it, it, it gets harder People say, well, I, I've started, I've really started moving towards God, but why is it so hard? Because you have an enemy, and that's just the way it is. It always will be. There's always going to be a resistance to your freedom in every way, always. And so here we are as we were praying, and we were praying, a, 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 and, and uh, someone had a vision of a, a door open and a bridge and how God wants to take us through the door so he can help us across the bridge of relationship and it's a wonderful word and and I was standing there and we were praying and I was just declaring and all that and I suddenly saw a picture and I saw myself in darkness and um and and I don't like the dark I never have I like night lights still <laughs> And uh, I, I don't like it to be pitch dark. I don't, just don't like it, never have. But I saw myself in this moment as I was praying. I saw myself in this darkness, and I saw myself, you know, walking. And, and you know how you do, like, you're, you, you know where the, where the door is, right? But when it's pitch dark, you lose perspective. And so I could see myself going, you know, I'm, 
two steps to the left, wait a minute. No, two steps to the right, one step forward. Oh, wait a minute, that's not it. Uh. And I saw myself coming to this moment in this darkness in which I was looking around in my, per, look, trying to gain perspective, and suddenly the light came on. And I saw this door, it was wide open, and I saw a motion detector. And I realized that that door was there, it had never moved. But in the darkness, I didn't know where it was. But it was only in motion and movement <laughs> that the light came on. Amen. Yeah. But, you know, that's the moment when we don't want to do anything, when we get paralyzed, when we find ourselves sinking into that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use the word fear. We don't want to call it that. But sometimes that really is what it is. We're afraid to, we don't, we, or we've lost our way. We can't seem to figure it out. And we're afraid if we, if we step out or if we move or whatever it is, maybe that, you know, the things we don't like about darkness, things that go bump in the night. We don't want to hit anything else. We don't want to find anything else in that darkness. But the truth is in God, in God, it is as we make movement, as we continue, if we do what we can do. That's all God's looking for is you do what you can do and keep looking to him. Amen. Because in it, I promise you, he is the light and the, and the motion is going to be detected. The light's going to come on and the open doors that are already there will show up. Amen. Hallelujah. And sometimes the darkness that around us is the thing we don't want to do. And, and therefore, we sit waiting, I don't know for what, we're all the same. Uh, we think, I guess, if we, if we don't start making those strides towards whatever it is, I just, here's the deal, what do you want? And it comes down to that. What do you want? What do I want? Hmm. how badly do I want freedom? How much? What does it mean to me to get a revelation of God? What does that mean to me, and how valuable is it to me? Because I'll do whatever it takes. Amazingly, when my kids were little, and uh, they didn't like the dark, and, uh, and when they'd be in their rooms, scared. It's amazing how they would navigate the darkness. They'd be scared in their room, but they could navigate the darkness to my bed like a homing beacon. <laughs> they knew what they wanted. And that is what begins to happen in our lives. Now, I love what he says. I, I was thinking about, about David and um, just what his life and how it all works. You know, the assignment is not your purpose. Assignment accomplishes your purpose. Assignment is not a barometer of maturity. Assignment will bring maturity in our lives. And sometimes we get caught up in the assignment, but understand that assignment does not define us. The definition grows in our assignment. And I thought about this this shepherd boy, David, and we all know his story, but here he is as a shepherd out in the fields. And while he's there, he learns how to kill the lion and the bear. He's in his assignment. And there's something that goes with the assignment called the grace of God. So he's in his assignment. Now his brothers are all in the house. And when it comes time to anoint a new king of Israel, he stays out in the field. And as, as Samuel goes down the line and says, well, none of these boys are the right ones. Don't you have another son? He says this to Jesse. He said, yes, but he's out in the field in his assignment. And he brings him in, and he says, this is the one. He qualifies, and then he goes back out into the field. <laughs> Wait a minute. I thought when I started this assignment that there would come a day when I could get promoted, he goes back out one day 
needs to take some cheese to his brothers. Cheese and bread, they're, on, they're the soldiers, they're out on the, out on the front lines, they're in the glorious armies of Israel, and, and uh, he respects them, and he can't wait to get to the front lines, and, and his assignment is take the cheese and the bread. And he comes to do that, and when he gets there, he falls right into the midst of his purpose, come on, and he looks at all of that in the midst of his assignment. He says, this is not right. Somebody should stand up, and when nobody does, he says, I'll do it, and they send that little shepherd boy on out there against this giant Goliath when none of the armies of Israel, including his brothers, who he had come to serve, were willing to put their neck on the line until David said, I'll do it. So he went out, killed the, killed the giant, and then went home and went into the fields. And then one day Saul, because of his sin, he was absolutely tormented by evil spirits, and he heard about this little shepherd boy who played an instrument and sang, brought him into the court, and every time that David would play on the instrument and sing, the demons would leave Saul, and he would no longer be tormented. So here he is. We could say, well, what was his purpose? Well, I think he was finding out his purpose, and he didn't get so caught up in his assignment and the fear that he would be stuck in that assignment. Because he knew a God who was able to put him where he needed to be. I talk to you about this because sometimes as assignment begins to change and transition, we lose the definition of who we are and we're, we don't know how to deal with it. When God is wanting to do something, he wants to send us in, kill a giant. Or he wants to send us to the court and play so the demons leave the king <laughs> or the day comes when I've done all that I know to do and all of my assignments and then the king turns on me and, and tries to kill me and pins me against the wall with a spear because he's jealous of me and now I'm in a, this is all David's life, is I'm in a cave just trying to figure all of this out and as I'm there just having done the assignments to which I was called I find myself now uh, uh, in this in this cave and the spirit of God begins to draw people to me and they're all messed up and and in debt and all kinds of problems and then God says build an army and he said build an army wait a minute I, this all started out in the shepherd's field thought I'd always be a shepherd then I thought I'd always be in the king's house and then I thought I'd always be in the cave and then I thought I'd always the point is that every one of us in this room is destined for God's perfect plan the way we get there is not always perfect but the plans that he has for us are so how do I how do I do this well I, I live in my assignment fully I embrace that assignment with all that is within me and then I allow the spirit of God to lead me in the times when I can't see and I don't know what's next and I'm not sure what God is saying I continue that word is an important word continuing is an important word because if we don't continue we find ourselves in a place where you know, you're either kind of going forward with God or going backward. That's, that's the way it is. It's hard to stay in the same place. You're either moving on in God or you find yourself being pulled backwards. I don't want to be there. And I don't know about you, but this, this past few weeks as I've been praying, I've been before the Lord myself personally. Just say, Lord, I sense something, but I'm not quite sure what I sense. I know something, but I don't know what I know.
I, I'm not quite sure what all what it's all about, but I know one thing. I want to serve you with a whole heart. And this is what I know as well, is that when it all gets said and done, it goes back to one thing. Is Jesus the lover of your soul? And I realize that for me, it gets complicated. I get so much stuff. How about you? All the things that life, business, family, circumstances, issues, whatever it is. And and for me, it's that moment of coming into the presence of God like we did this morning and really just coming to the altar and saying, here it all is. Here it is. I can't figure all this out. I, I just cannot. I can't. I'm not supposed to be in control of my life. And every time I try to be in control, I get into trouble. I just, here it is. Here it is all that it is. The wonderful parts, the messy parts, the disappointed parts, the fearful parts. And even the strong parts. Because when we begin to be inflexible to the hand of God, we have made our journey harder. in this room today in the Legacy Theater. We're people from a lot of different backgrounds. and Our stories are different, and yet they are so much the same. I want to be free. I want to be happy. I want to follow God. I, I want to find that place in God, that place of divine peace and there's only one way up and that is by going down in my life I've always been interested in prophetic and and uh, deep understanding I love the presence of God. I love his word. And his word for me is more important than anything else. That's why when I'm not clear on that word, I find myself a little bit shaken. And until I can find that, but I know what brings me into peace in God, and most of us do. We want somebody else to do it for us. We'd, we'd love for there to be one mass prayer that delivers everybody. <laughs> I'd love to have that prayer. <laughs> I'd like to be able to pray that prayer. And we want to reach the world. We want to we do all of these things. We want to be successful. And everything that we do. But I find myself coming to a place of simplicity in God like never before. When I just really want to fall in love and stay in love with Jesus. Oh, there's lots of ways, lots of topics, lots of, I could do all kinds of series on different kinds of things you we could do that and as i prayed even this week and i said lord what all i could hear him say was find me so i want to say that to you all of this has been about one thing to say to you god's already made the plan he already knows your life he already ordained he designed and he commissioned and assigned and because he's done all those things he says, find me. And the scriptures tell us that if you will seek me, you will find me. And if you will seek me with all of your heart, here's where it comes to. Going after God. I don't have it all figured out, but I know one thing. I'm going to run even if it's in the darkness. I mean, if I hit a wall in the darkness, I'll hit it hard. I know what I want. What do you want? I want him.
I want his life in me. I want to change people's lives. I want the life of God in me to change people's lives. I don't want to just be able to preach a good sermon. I don't want to be somebody who looks good or acts. I want to be so enveloped in the power and presence of God that when I talk to somebody or touch them, they know they have seen God, not me. That's what I want. I want to be hidden in God. I really want that. I really want Epic Church to be full of people with the with not only the power of God but the fruit of his spirit in our lives I want epic church to be a place of uh, where people mature and come into the place where they can bring others in and sh shelter others that I want to reproduce I, I know what I want I want him first I want him Nobody, Epic Church didn't change my life. People didn't change me. God changed me. He saved me. He's the one who saved me. He's the one who took me out of my own plans and my own ideas. and all. He's the one who, who transplanted me and took me out of the, that old place and brought me into the, the kingdom of the son of his love. It's him. It's all about him. It's about him first. First. Everything else will find its right alignment when I come to the assignment I have, which is to know him. And like Paul, I press on. <laughs> Anybody, any other pressers in here with me this morning? Like Paul, I press and I strain. That's what it means, I strain forward to the higher call in Christ Jesus, <laughs> forgetting all the stuff that lies behind me. You are holy, holy, Lord, there is none like you. You are holy, holy, glory to you alone. I'll sing your praises forever, deeper in love with you, here in your courts where I'm close to your throne, I found where I belong. I'll sing your praises forever, deeper in love with you. Here in your courts where I'm close to your throne, I found where I belong. Stand to your feet if you would. Hallelujah. There's some of you here this morning. Say, I, I, that peace for me is fleeting and Finding out where I belong is what, what I want more than anything. I'm tired of the bondage in my life and all the darkness that seems to keep me from everything God has for me. And I'm ready to, to even just, to just march out in the dark knowing that my movement towards him turns the light on for me. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. For just this moment, if that's you this morning, you say, this is hitting me right in the heart, right where I am. And I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, and when you do, I want you to know, I'm going to pray with you. That's the first step of kind of like saying, I need to find where I belong. This is it. I I'm ready. I'm ready. 
I want him. I want him in my life. I want my life to change now. And I'm ready. And if that's you, I want you to just lift it. Yes, sir. I see your hand. Who else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. In some ways, my hand is raised right now. (laughs) Everybody could raise their hands. But you've been walking, and some of you know that there's a desperation in your heart to know if this is going to change, I've got to, I've got to take the first step. If that's you, I'm going to ask our, our pastors, our pastoral team to come. Come stand right here. Come close. And if that's you, I want you to just step out from where you are right now quickly and, and, and let our, our pastors want to pray with you. Just come on, brother. Come on. Yes. Come on. God bless you. God bless you, young man. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Amen. God bless you, darling. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, young man. Hallelujah. Go ahead, pastors. Just grab hold of them. Yes. Amen. Come on. Right over here. Hallelujah. I am so thankful for the presence and the power of God. And God's power to change our lives. This morning, how many of you agree with me? I want God's, everything God has for me. I don't want to hold back anything. That's you. I want you to just wave your hands. (laughs) That's who we are. We're the people who go hard after God. And and we don't always do it right. <laughs> Lord knows we don't. But I'll tell you one thing. We're at least moving. And, and the lights are coming on all over the place. We're going to keep moving for everything God has for us. And we're going to forget what lies behind. Today, let this be the, the new mercies of God. Anybody want a clean slate? There's my hand. I want a clean slate today. So I I say today, the mercies of God have come. And and his mercies are new every morning. I receive those mercies now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to walk out of here with a clean slate, ready to run with God. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. I release his anointing upon your life and declare that every word you've spoken before the Lord, everything your heart has cried out for before God is heard in heaven. And from the very throne room of God, you have been set free. God himself is going with you to lead you and guide you. I pray for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life. On this day of Pentecost, may you know the power and life of the Holy Spirit to completely saturate you in everything that you do. Hallelujah. I release upon you the strength and the courage to obey God in everything. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. We love you with all our hearts. And listen, let somebody know how God has changed your life so you can go out and change somebody else's life by telling them what Jesus did for you. God bless you as you go. Hallelujah.